This is Into Math for Second Grade, Module 17, Lesson 6. Add and subtract three-digit numbers. I can regroup to solve addition and subtraction problems with three-digit numbers. Please gather your workbook and a pencil and turn to page 419. We will begin on page 419 under Step It Out, Part 1. Mr. Walker buys a jar of 510 beads. He uses... 274 beads to make necklaces to sell. How many beads does Mr. Walker still have? Part A asks us to write the number of beads in the jar to represent the problem. So we need to write the amount of beads that were in the jar, which in our word problem we know was 510 beads. So let's go ahead and write that in now. 510 beads. Okay, and then we see that there's subtraction because we're taking away, and the number that we're taking away, 274, that's the amount of beads he uses to make the necklace to sell. Part B asks us to draw a visual model to show how to subtract. Remember to think, do I need to regroup? So we will draw the 510 first. So we have 500s, which we represent with our squares, we have one group of 10 and we have zero ones. And when we take a look at the ones column, we see we have nothing in the ones column and we need to take away four. So we're definitely going to need to regroup from this 10. Well, there's only one 10 here and look, we're going to need to subtract seven tens. So that means we're definitely going to need to regroup from one of these hundreds here um, to bring over to the tens. So I'm gonna show my regrouping in, in red so you'll see it in a different color. So from the start, when I have zero here and I need to borrow from this 10, I'm going to come over to the 10, cross it out, and I'm going to regroup and make 10 ones. So that's one regrouping, right? So I have taken this one, I've made it into a zero, and then I've made this zero ones into 10 ones. So now I can subtract 10, take away four. And when I do that, I'll take four away here, one, two, three, four, and I am left with six left. Okay, so then I can look at the tens column. I don't have any more tens, zero, and I need to take away seven. So I'm gonna go over to one of the hundreds and I'm going to cross out uh, one of the hundreds here to regroup. So I cross out this hundred and that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tens. And again, I'm gonna do that over here. I have now four hundreds left. And instead of zero tens, now I have 10 tens. And I'm writing over this problem because it's uh, hard to see. Okay, so now I have 10 tens. So I have 10 take away seven, so I can go ahead and cross out seven of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that leaves me with three tens left over. And then the final part, the hundreds, four hundreds, take away two, I would cross off two of the hundreds, and I am left with two. So looking at part C, how many hundreds, tens, and ones are left? Um, we can see that there are two hundreds, three tens, and six ones. And we see that here in our visual model, and we've also done the work here recorded. Great job. So how many beads does Mr. Walker still have? And we've answered that, 236 beads. Great work. Okay, on the next page, page 420, we're looking at Step It Out. And they give us a problem here, 456 plus 195. It's always important to look at the symbol because we've been doing a lot in subtraction and now they're add, asking us to add this three digit number. So part A says, show this problem with a visual model. You may choose to show this problem with a visual model with maybe blocks or cubes that you have at home, um, or you can just draw it on the side of your workbook, uh, just like I'm going to do now. So there are um, six ones. There's six ones. There are 
One, two, three, four, five tens, and there are four hundreds in 456. And then there are one, two, three, four, five ones. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tens, and there's only one hundred in 195. So I'm going to draw this visual problem, and I would add these up together. I'm seeing here that there's a lot of ones and a lot of tens, and we know when there's 10 ones, that makes 110, and when there's 10 tens, that makes 100. So let's look and see what we have here. We have 11 ones, we have 14 tens, and five hundreds. So we can do some regrouping here. In the ones column, I see that there are 10 ones, and we know that 10 ones make one group of 10. And so I would actually cross that out and I would make a group of 10 to add to our tens. And then I'm going to come over to our tens, and I see, oh, right here, nine plus one, that makes 10. So I'm not going to have tens there anymore. I'm going to have another hundred. And so when I look at this visual model and I'm all done, I'm going to see that there are six hundreds, there are five ones, and there is one one. So I'm already going to see that my answer is going to be 651 just with my visual model. Part B asks me to use your model to explain if you should regroup. And we can answer. There are 11 ones, which I regroup as 110 and 11, which we did here. We made that into 110 and 11. And then there are 15 tens when we add all of those. 15 tens, which I regroup to 105 tens. Let's take a look at part C. Add to solve. Record your regrouping. So first we had um, six plus five, and that made 11. So we regrouped, remember here, we had 11 ones, we regrouped, so we made 110 and 11. So we put that 110 here, and the one, that the one, the one one on the bottom here, and the answer. Then we took a look at all the tens, one, five, and nine, one, five, and nine, and we knew that that was 15 tens, so we regrouped to 105 tens. So we put that 100 here, and the rest of the five tens here. And then we looked at the hundreds column, one, four, and one, where we had one, four, and one, and we added those together, and when we add those together, we get six. So our answer is 651, which is the same answer we got here in our visual model. Now let's look at part D. Check your work to be sure the addition in your problem matches the addition in your visual model. Well, we just did that, so we can give ourselves a nice little star next to both of those numbers. Great job. Let's take a look at check understanding. You're welcome to um, try this on your own or you can follow along with me. Miss Ita puts strings with 400 lights in her yard. She sees that 116 of the lights do not work. How many lights do work? Solve. All right, so we have 400 lights, and sadly, 116 of them don't work. So we're gonna take away 116 to find out how many do work. What it, what's the rest that do, the number of lights that do work? So we're gonna start with the ones column. We have zero, and we need to take away six lights, but we don't have six lights to take away. So we're gonna go next to the tens, and oh no, there are no tens here. So we need to go over to the hundreds. We see that there are four hundreds. So we're gonna go ahead and cross out 
take one of those hundreds away and that leaves us with 300. Then we're going to bring that group of 10 tens over. And again, we don't have any tens to put it with. So we no longer have zero tens, we have 10 tens. So we take that 10 10, those 10 tens, and we're gonna take one of those away because we want to make ones in the ones column. So now we don't have 10 tens, we have nine tens. And we're gonna take one of those tens, bring it over here to the ones. We have 10 ones, and we don't have any ones to add it to. So we're gonna cross off that zero, and now we have 10 ones. So we have regrouped, and we're ready to do the subtraction. We have 10 take away six, and when we have 10 take away six, we find that our answer is four. Then we have nine take away one, and nine take away one is eight. And then the last, the hundreds, we have three hundreds take away one hundred, and we find that that is two. So the answer to our problem is 284 lights. As always, you can go back and rewatch this video and you can pause along the way anytime as needed.